Good evening, and welcome to the Crypto Overnighter. I'm Nicodemus, and I will be your host as we take a look at the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. And remember, none of this is financial advice. And it's 10 p.m. on Saturday, July 29th, 2023. Welcome back to the Crypto Overnighter, where we have no sponsors, no hidden agendas, and no BS. But we do have the news, so let's get to that. Tonight, we're going on a wild ride through the tumultuous world of crypto. We'll start with a deep dive into the drama surrounding Sam Bankman fried The former FTX chief is under house arrest and just might be turning state's evidence. From there, we'll look at the SEC's recent warning to accounting firms and why crypto mom Hester Pierce isn't on board with it. We'll also talk about a surprising alliance between the Bank Policy Institute and Senator Elizabeth Warren, two parties you usually don't see together. Then we'll investigate Apple's App Store policies and how they could be stifling emerging technologies. We're also headed to Japan, where the Blockchain Association is shaking things up with a proposal for new tax laws. And finally, we'll return stateside, where the SEC and Binance are uniting against a common foe. Buckle up, because this is one ride you don't want to miss. Sam Bankman fried has been spotted near the office of the Southern District of New York Department of Justice. This has sparked speculation that he might be cooperating with the DOJ on several ongoing and upcoming crypto-related investigations. It's unusual for defendants to meet with the prosecutors, so the speculation is that he might have turned state's evidence. Your question might be, evidence against who? He's the main villain in this story. What's going on is, new documents have been filed in an ongoing case launched by investigators against Bitfinex and Tether. This case alleges that the firms purchased Bitcoin and other digital commodities with Tether that was not fully backed by USD, creating artificial demand and inflating prices. Now, in this case, the documents mention an anonymous crypto trader who used wallets on Bitfinex and Poloniex for Bitcoin transactions. This trader's wallet was among those that received 72% of all Tether issued between 2018 and 2019. The trader is described as an arbitrage trader and is not part of the Tether or Bitfinex teams. Alameda Research was one of the biggest recipients of Tether, receiving 37% of all Tether issued as of 2021. Now, there's no concrete evidence that SBF is the anonymous trader mentioned in the case against Tether. However, his knowledge and involvement in the crypto industry could provide valuable information to the authorities. SBF was part of a WhatsApp group called Exchange Coordination, which included several top figures in the crypto exchange world. This group was used to coordinate actions by the major exchange owners. If SBF is indeed cooperating with the DOJ, the information he could provide from these interactions could be significant. In light of these developments, it is clear that the crypto industry is under intense scrutiny. The authorities are digging deep, and it seems that no stone is being left unturned. That's why we must remain vigilant and informed. Because while we champion financial freedom and privacy, it is crucial to remember that these values must be upheld within the bounds of law and ethics. Shifting gears from the courtroom drama, let's turn our attention to the SEC, where things are heating up. But before we get to that, remember to like, follow, and subscribe. Ring that notification bell to stay informed. Now get ready because this is a battle you don't want to miss. The U.S. Securities Exchange Commission recently issued a warning to accounting firms about the potential legal liabilities they could face when conducting audits for cryptocurrency firms. The SEC statement has raised eyebrows in the crypto community, with many questioning the motives behind this sudden cautionary stance. The warning comes amid a growing trend of crypto firms seeking public listings. The watchdog statement emphasized that the need for accounting firms to exercise due diligence and to ensure that they are not providing misleading information to investors. The SEC highlighted the risks associated with auditing crypto firms, particularly those that hold a significant amount of digital assets. The regulators stressed that these firms should only be audited by accountants who have a deep understanding of the crypto industry and its associated risks. However, not everyone agrees with the SEC's stance. SEC Commissioner Hester Pierce openly challenged the watchdog's warning. Known as Crypto Mom for her pro-crypto stance, Pierce has been a vocal critic of the SEC's approach toward the crypto industry. She argues that the SEC's warning could discourage transparency efforts from the crypto industry and hinder its growth. Pierce's challenge to the SEC's warning has sparked a debate within the crypto community. Some argue that the SEC's cautionary stance is necessary to protect investors and to maintain the integrity of the financial markets. Others, however, believe that the SEC's warning is an attempt to stifle the crypto industry and prevent it from challenging the traditional financial system. 
In my opinion, the SEC's warning to accounting firms is a clear indication of the regulatory challenges that the crypto industry continues to face. While it is crucial to protect investors and maintain market integrity, it's equally important to foster innovation and growth in the crypto industry. The SEC's warning could potentially discourage accounting firms from working with crypto firms, thereby creating a barrier to entry for these firms in the public market. And frankly, I believe that is exactly the SEC's desired effect to continue to squeeze the crypto firms out of the TradFi system, just the same as cutting them off from sources of fiat, cutting firms off from accounting services is meant to choke the life out of the industry. However, the industry has proven its resilience time and again, and I believe it will continue to do so in the face of these regulatory challenges. As for the accounting firms, they must equip themselves with the necessary knowledge and skills to navigate the complex world of crypto. Because crypto is not going away. The future of finance is digital, and those who fail to adapt will be left behind. Next on our agenda is a strange alliance that could shake up the crypto world. A banking group is rallying behind a critic of cryptocurrencies. That's a plot worthy of a Hollywood movie. So sit tight, because this one's got everything. Drama, suspense, and a little bit of mystery. The Bank Policy Institute is a United States banking advocacy group. They've thrown their support behind a bill reintroduced by Senator Elizabeth Warren. Warren is known to be a critic of cryptocurrencies, and this bill, known as the Digital Asset Anti-Money Laundering Act, is aimed at bringing digital assets under a specific set of anti-money laundering laws. The BPI's support for the bill is rooted in its belief that including digital assets in the AML framework is essential for safeguarding the United States financial system. The bill is also backed by Senators Joe Manchin, Roger Marshall, and Lindsey Graham, something of a bipartisan effort. It demands more transparency in digital asset transactions to combat money laundering and terrorism financing. BPI has highlighted that the existing AML framework in the U.S. does not account for digital assets. The proposed bill will require digital asset wallet providers, miners, and anybody else that validates and secures transactions on a blockchain, they're going to have to keep records of their customers' identities. The legislation would also prohibit financial institutions from using digital asset mixers such as Tornado Cash because they are designed to hide blockchain data. The bill has attracted support from other entities as well, including the Massachusetts Banker Association, the National Consumer Law Center, and the National Consumers League. However, it has drawn sharp criticism from some quarters of the crypto community. Tyler Winklevoss, co-founder of the crypto exchange Gemini, took to Twitter to express his opposition to the bill. He suggested that those against the bill are doing the right thing. Warren initially introduced the bill to the U.S. Senate in December 2022 arguing that the current AML laws do not cover most of the crypto industry. During a Senate banking committee hearing titled Crypto Crash, Why the FTX Bubble Burst and the Harm to Consumers, Warren declared that crypto should be held to the same regulations as banking institutions. In light of these developments, it is clear that the battle lines are being drawn. On one side, we have entities like the BPI and Senator Warren pushing for stricter regulations on digital assets. On the other, we have the crypto community who sees this as an attempt to stifle innovation and maintain the status quo. It's a classic case of old guard versus new, and it's a battle that will have far-reaching implications for the future of finance. We should be wary of such attempts to regulate the industry. While it is true that there are legitimate concerns about money laundering and terrorism financing, it's also true that these issues exist within the traditional banking system as well. The question then becomes, why should crypto be held to a higher standard? That's a question that we as a community need to answer if we're going to resist these regulatory overtures. From the world of banking, we move to tech. Apple is under scrutiny from U.S. lawmakers. This one's for all you tech buffs out there who've been looking for a reason to root for the underdog. Buckle up, because we're about to deep dive into the world of tech giants and crypto. And this one is your cover story for tonight. Apple is under the microscope, facing scrutiny from U.S. lawmakers. Representative Gus Bilirakis, a Republican from Florida, and Jan Schakowsky, a Democrat from Illinois, have penned a letter to Apple CEO Tim Cook in the second bipartisan effort I'm bringing you tonight. Their concern? Apple's App Store guidelines. Specifically how those guidelines might be stifling emerging technologies like distributed ledger technology and NFTs. The lawmakers pointed out that Apple seems to have leveraged its App Store guidelines to both profit from and limit the utility of crypto apps. They cited the experience of Axie Infinity, a popular blockchain-based game which had to roll out a light version of its app to comply with Apple's rules. The representatives are worried that these policies could harm the nation's leadership in the world of emerging technologies. 
They argue that while Apple claims these limitations increase security by creating a walled garden, many are concerned that Apple is using the App Store as a weapon against its competitors. Now think about this. It seems Apple's App Store policies have long been a subject of controversy. Critics have argued the company's strict guidelines and hefty fees stifle competition and innovation. This latest probe by lawmakers is a clear indication that these concerns are now reaching the highest levels of government. The lawmakers' letter is a significant development. It signals a growing recognition of the importance of emerging technologies like blockchain and NFTs and the potential impact of tech giants' policies on these technologies. The reference to Axie Infinity's experience is particularly noteworthy. It highlights the real-world implications of Apple's policies on crypto apps and how these policies could be limiting the potential of these apps. If you're a fan of Apple, iPhones, crypto, and decentralization, this is the story to watch. The outcome of this probe could have significant implications for the future of crypto apps on the App Store. If lawmakers can push Apple to loosen its guidelines, it could open up new opportunities for innovation and growth in the crypto space. But if Apple holds firm, it could continue to limit the potential of crypto apps on its platform. This could stifle innovation and make it harder for new and exciting crypto projects to reach a wide audience. So whether you're an Axie Infinity player, a crypto investor, or just a fan of financial freedom and privacy, keep an eye on this one. It's a reminder that the battle for the future of crypto isn't just being fought in the marketplace or on the blockchain. It's also being fought in the halls of power. But the excitement doesn't stop there. We're taking a virtual trip to Japan, where the Blockchain Association is making moves. They've submitted a proposal to tax authorities to revise the tax laws for cryptocurrencies. Sounds kind of dry, right? Well, think again, because this could be the game changer that Japan's been waiting for. Japan's Blockchain Association wants the country's tax authorities to revise the tax laws for crypto. Now, why is this important? Well, it's all about making Japan more attractive for crypto businesses. The current tax laws are seen as a major hurdle for companies interested in setting up shop in Japan. And we all know how much potential there is in the crypto market. The association's proposal is pretty straightforward. They want to change the classification of cryptocurrencies from miscellaneous income to separate declared taxation. What does that mean? Under the current system, crypto gains are taxed at rates as high as 55%. But if this proposal is accepted, the maximum tax rate would be reduced to 20%. That's a significant drop, and it could be a game changer for businesses. But here's the thing. This isn't just about tax rates. It's about the future of crypto in Japan and beyond. By making these changes, Japan could become a major hub for crypto businesses. And that's not just good for Japan, it's good for the entire crypto ecosystem. It's about creating a more favorable environment for innovation and growth. And it's about time governments realized the potential of crypto and started making changes to support it. So in my view, we all know governments and central banks have been trying to control and regulate cryptocurrencies. It shows up in just about every story every night. They're scared. They're scared of the freedom and independence that crypto offers. They're scared of losing control. But this move by Japan's Blockchain Association is a step in the right direction. It's a sign that the tide is turning, that the power is shifting from central banks to the people. And that's something we should all be excited about. Finally, we land back home where the SEC and Binance are on the same side. Now, this is a plot twist we did not see coming. But before we do, remember to hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any updates in the future. The United States SEC and Binance have found themselves on the same side of the courtroom. These unlikely allies are united against an entity named Eon. Now, Eon has been attempting to intervene on behalf of customers in the SEC's ongoing case against Binance. Now, here's the interesting part. The SEC and Binance have both submitted responses to Eon's request, stating that it does not meet the necessary legal requirements for intervention. The SEC has gone a step further, pointing out that Eon has a history of repeatedly and unsuccessfully representing itself in court cases. So what's going on here? The SEC's argument is based on the Securities Exchange Act, which, according to them, prohibits private litigants from intervening. This makes Eon's request straight up against the rules. They also argue that Eon's participation would not significantly impact the lawsuit as their claims align with those of the defendants and fail to meet the requirements for intervention. Binance, on the other hand, has provided three grounds for dismissing Eon's petition. These include lack of consent from the SEC, Eon's failure to establish itself as a legitimate party of interest, and its failure to meet the necessary legal requirements for intervention. Now let's talk about what this means for the crypto community. It is a clear example of the ongoing struggle between regulatory bodies in the crypto industry. While the SEC is known for its stringent regulations, it's interesting to see Binance siding with them against a third party. 
This shows the complexity of the legal landscape surrounding crypto. I plan to keep a close eye on these developments. They could set precedents for future cases and shape the way cryptocurrencies are regulated. So what happened? We started with Sam Bankman-Fried. He's currently under house arrest and potentially cooperating with the Department of Justice. His actions could potentially blow up in several ongoing and upcoming crypto-related investigations. Then we turned our attention to the SEC, where Hester Pierce is challenging a warning issued by the regulator to accounting firms auditing crypto firms. In a surprising turn of events, the Bank Policy Institute is rallying behind a bill reintroduced by Senator Elizabeth Warren. The bill, if passed, will bring digital assets under specific anti-money laundering laws. This move by the BPI and Senator Warren could have far-reaching implications for the crypto industry. We also took a look at Apple. The tech giant is under scrutiny from U.S. lawmakers for their App Store guidelines. These policies could potentially be stifling emerging technologies like blockchain and NFTs. Then we took a virtual trip to Japan where the Blockchain Association is making moves to make the country more attractive for crypto businesses by proposing a revision of tax laws for cryptocurrencies. Finally, we examined the unexpected alliance between the SEC and Binance against Eon's intervention request in a lawsuit. This unusual unity showcases the complex landscape of crypto regulation and the surprising alliances it can spawn. And that's going to do it for us, folks. I want to thank you, my listeners, because when you stop listening, I will stop talking. If you enjoyed tonight's show, then please like, follow, subscribe, leave a rating, or maybe a review. And in the meantime, we'll see you tomorrow night.